We've had a lot of requests to cover the Golden Knight, Garo, and this week we'll delve into this Japanese midnight tokusatsu franchise. There's going to be boobs, blood, and mostly beard, because Diana still isn't here. I'm Michael Nixon, and this is Geek Crash Course West. Premiering in 2005, Gara was a series devised by writer-director-producer Keita Amamiya for a late-night time slot. Darker, grittier, and more grown-up than standard four-kids tokusatsu fare, Garo is clearly a franchise for adults. So don't look at it if you're a kid. Not yet. Eventually you'll be ready. It's not now. After the first series, Garo returned for more series, some theatrical films, and an upcoming anime. The franchise generally revolves around stories of a magical warrior or Makai Knight, a specially trained and magically aware fighter who can summon a magically enhanced suit of armor in times of need. These knights patrol the modern world, keeping the magical from infringing on the lives of normal humans, mainly by battling horrors, monsters that seek out human vice. Garo is well known as one of the better series for grown-up fans of tokusatsu. There's a great gothic horror sensibility that feels a bit more grown-up than the usual fare. The stunts are better, the wire work is cooler, the boss fights are completely insane, and the effects range from enjoyably rough to acid-filled CGI fight paintings. It's an insane show that's basically required viewing for fans of Japanese effects, monster movies, or late 2000s J-horror. It's the real deal, people. Check it out. Unless you're a kid, then don't, because there's a lot of stuff you probably shouldn't see yet. The Garo series initially followed Koga, a recent incumbent to the Makai Knight title of Garo, inheriting it from his now-deceased father, Taiga. The Garo title is passed generationally, along with a badass suit of golden wolf-style armor. It's never explained fully in the series, but the Garo title is widely respected among Makai Knights and widely feared by horrors. Makai Knights are specially trained warriors who fight horrors. They use a variety of tools and magical abilities, and can also call upon powerful enchanted armor in times of need. Each knight follows a lineage, passing down a single suit of armor and taking on that armor's title. Garo is an example of one of these titles, and the franchise has seen several knights with the Garo title so far. Makai Knights summon their armor using weapons made of the super weighty magical mineral Soul Metal, and trained from a young age to deal with the magical forces of nature. The knights mainly battle the horrors, demons empowered by human vices like greed, lust, and wrath. Essentially, horrors are drawn to these strong negative emotions and consume a target, embodying a hellish representation of the target's vice. Makai knights are aided in their never-ending cycle of magical battle against the horrors by Makai priests, who train in spells and magic that can track, injure, and bind horrors, but who can't generally defeat horrors without a knight present. Garo has some pretty cool gadgets. Koga's set of go-to toys include Zaruba, a sentient talking demon skull ring, as well as a lighter that can spew green fire and detect horrors. Koga can also summon the magical spirit warhorse Goten, which he can ride while in armor. The first series concerned Koga's adventures as Garo, battling various horrors in a variety of episodic stories, but also following a larger arc concerning an artistic young woman, Kaoru, who is infected with horror blood. Koga swears to protect her, and the pair end up in a slow-going romance, with feelings developing across two seasons of the show. Over the course of the first series, Koga also falls afoul of a larger scheme involving two other Makai Knights. The first is Rei, better known as the Makai Knight Zero. Rei thinks that Garo killed his family, but he's set straight, staying with the series as a recurring character. The second other knight is Barago, who holds the armor of Kiba. The Kiba armor was tainted by horror power in a deal with Messia, the mother of horrors, a recurring super demon in the series lore. Barago has, as a result of his dealings with dark magic, become a bit of a bad guy. It's a bit complicated, but the first series actually lays out relatively dense lore in a succinct and effective way. Plus, the fights and effects were amazing for the time, if a bit CGI dated now. A second series, bracketed by theatrical films, miniseries, and one-shot specials, continued the adventures of Koga, his love story with Kaoru, his friendly rivalry with Rei, and his battle against the horrors. A good pile of characters, Makai knights and priests included, returned for this second season, which focused on a schism forming between the knights and priests, with Koga and several of the other knights cursed with a spell that weakens them over time, essentially a ticking clock racing towards the amazing finale. The third series jumped further ahead in the timeline to follow a new Garo, Ryuga Dogai as he protected the horror-infested Vol City, while trying to solve the mystery of what tarnished the Golden Garo armor, Jet Black. The upcoming fourth series will include another new Garo, Koga's son, so it looks like the franchise is developing into a sort of chronology of Garo's successors. 
Makai Knights are limited to 99.9 .9 seconds of time in their armor before the magical balance between the knight and his armor shifts, merging both into a terrifying creature called a Lost Soul Beast. Koga has actually hit this limit more than once, but has recovered each time, though the results do tend to get a little bit messy. Garo is one of those rare properties where I'd really suggest you start from the beginning. It's a show with a complex and dense mythology that really rewards a deep reviewing from fans. That said, it's also an amazing cacophony of light, sound, fighting, and CGI if you just want to give it a quick sampler. The first series lays the groundwork for the whole franchise, so it's the right place to start for the deep reviewing approach. The second series has some of the most insane visuals for those interested in the pretty pictures, especially towards the finale. It also keeps up the usual boob quotient if you're in it for the boobs, which, if you are, is just sad, because there's more to life. There just is. Anyway, the third series is sort of an autopilot season, disconnected from the rest, but Average Garo is still great tokusatsu, so it's totally watchable. It's also a vaguely okay series to try for a trial watch if you crave a more current series of CGI rendering textures. If you're going the watch everything method, there's a bunch of movies, TV specials, and straight to video installments to track down. Weirdly enough, Wikipedia has a solid list of the Garo franchise in release order, at least for now. You know how unreliable Wikipedia can be. There's even more Garo on the way in 2014 as well, including Zero Black Blood, a six-part miniseries following Rei, Garo, the Makai Flower, the aforementioned fourth series following the new Garo, son of Koga and Kaoru, an anime retelling an expansion of the first series, and a follow-up movie to the third series coming this fall. So you should get cracking on catching up. Luckily, you can still find downloads of fan-subbed versions of pretty much the entire franchise. Now, fan-subbing is sort of a piracy thing, so it's not strictly speaking legal, but there's a lot of looking the other way involved. Look, I'm not telling you to do it, I'm just saying it exists. Is that clear? Good. The Garo franchise is kind of a who's who of Sentai and Rider alumni, but in the third series the villains are joined by screen legend Yasuaki Kurata. He's known for appearing in several Hong Kong films of the 1970s as a sort of evil Japanese stereotype, and in the sister Street Fighter movies with Etsuko Shimori. Keen-eyed fans will recognize him for his part in the Jet Li classic The Fist of Legend, considered to be one of the best martial arts films of the 1990s. Huge thanks to Mike Dent of the Tokusatsu Network for doing a bit of fact-checking on this week's Garo episode, as well as providing one of our fun facts. You can follow him at Guy Jinder over on Twitter. I highly recommend it. He's a friend of the show. Uh, until next week, if you have any questions, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website, geekcrashcourse.com. Thanks for watching, and at least one of the co-hosts will see you next week on Geek Crash Course. Probably not me. Diana was sick this week. This week was supposed to be her, but she's sick, so I was like, hey, don't be sick. So hopefully next week is her, because if it's me again next week, something's like real bad. Don't freak out.